I used to be huge on sports psychology. I'd read book after book and try and learn everything about the mind so I could shake off the anxiety or general unconfidence I'd feel when receiving the ball in certain situations. And through my journey of creating this page, diving deep into the analysis side of the game for individual performance opposed to team performance, it's all helped me understand why 99% of players struggle with fear and confidence when receiving the ball. And I wanted to share this with you because I've received the same amount of messages of players asking me about confidence, scared to get on the ball, as I do with stuff around my analysis videos. And definitely the culture in sports today is all about psychology. You have to master your mind, different little mantras to think about, and you can go down an absolute rabbit hole. And I've worked with an amazing sports psychologist myself, and I'd recommend it to all players. It's amazing. But for me, and most of the players, there's a big underlying issue that no mantra or no way of thinking or no book will help you with. The reason why you're unconfident, whether that be with your whole game or just a small section of it, is not because you're lacking a mantra or a way of thinking or that next book that you want to buy. It's because you have knowledge gaps in that area of your game. It's that simple. And it's really hard to spot at times because you don't know what you don't know. I'll say that again. You don't know what you don't know. Think of something you're an expert at. Let's use a basic analogy of someone driving a car, right? Do you know anyone who gets in the car full of anxiety, causing an accident every time they drive, constantly stalling at every light? If they have a driving license, the answer is probably no. They just get in the car and drive with confidence, even have music playing, can have a conversation. It becomes second nature. But now we need to think, why are they confident? They've gone through training. They've done the practical side of the training, sat with the driving instructor, which is equivalent to you going out on a training pitch, doing possession drills, shooting drills, or just working on ball mastery. And then they also do the theory side of it, where they have to sit down, they have to learn what all the signs on the road mean, and just all the basic rules of the road, which is the equivalent to you studying your position, learning all the cues and triggers that you need to know, leading to your spotting opportunities that a less knowledgeable player wouldn't even know exist. So here's the problem with football academies. You do a lot of the practical work, all the drills, all the team training, but we never do the other side of it. And if you do, it's always team-based. A post-match analysis of how the team performed, but never individual, never position-specific. You may learn about the broad knowledge of the game going through the post-match analysis, but a huge part is missing. Your individual side of the game, how you think about the game, how you think about your position, how well you understand space, how it's created. The list goes on and on. When my heart was getting worse and worse, eventually leading to me not being able to play anymore, I had so much time to reflect and I'd always think, what would I do differently? And what was missing for me to get to the next level? When reflecting, I asked myself, do I have expert knowledge in any area of the game? And the answer was no. And I remember I would always search for dribbling, shooting, football IQ, books and courses, but there was literally nothing out there. And then there's no material within the club or within the system, the academy, to help improve yourself with that. So I took it up on myself to research and study all the individual aspects of player performance. The more I've done it, the more I realised how much I didn't know. And I was playing pro. So then I think, imagine about the younger kids in the academies now, or people just playing at amateur level. It all became super clear when I started CMP, chasing my potential. Confidence on the pitch is heavily tied to knowledge. And my whole motivation now is to create videos like I do, educating you in a way that you've never been taught before. Opening your eyes to some of the knowledge gaps that you never knew even existed. Because working hard isn't enough. You have to be working hard on the right things. An example now that I will definitely do differently, hopefully when I'm back playing in March, if everything stays good with the heart. So I've got really fast feet with the ball. When I was younger, me and my dad would get Brazilian DVDs and we'd go for all the skills and just practice and practice. I've been doing that up until present. But for me to improve my dribbling now, it's not about doing more drills with the ball to get my feet even faster. Yes, I still need to do this, but it shouldn't be my main focus. Now, it'll be more about the theory side, the bit that we all miss. Learning the fundamentals of dribbling, where the first idea of my course came from. I realised I have such fast feet and I'm good at beating players, but I don't truly, truly know what I'm doing. So I thought there has to be a system to it. So if I want to be the best, surely I need to understand how every scenario works. In each one versus one, for example. Having fast feet and knowing a lot of skills only gets you so far. The next step is then adding intelligence behind your skills. Knowing how to use them and in what situations. Knowing how each skill makes a defender move. And the cues to look for 
in specific situations. My biggest advice when players message me asking about confidence, fear, how do they feel more confident, is to stop doing the same generic drills. Start working on the theory side of the game more. That means sometimes not even going out with the ball. Sitting down and watching clips of scenarios where you feel uncomfortable and have knowledge gaps. You probably see players who you know, playing at a higher level than you, maybe they play in the same team as you but they're always playing better in game. But you know you're more skillful than them. You have a better touch than them. Just maybe your overall game, you're a much better technical player. But what they have over you is something that you can't see. They have less knowledge gaps, making it easier for them to make fast decisions on the ball. Finding better pockets of space, maybe they understand how space is created better than you do. And once you start to do this work, you realize how much there is to work on. But once you know what to work on, the roadmap, the fear and the anxiety to get on the ball will slowly fade away once you start replacing them knowledge gaps. Unfortunately, the football world doesn't have this sort of stuff in a simple framework to follow. And that's exactly what I'm trying to do. So have an honest reflection with yourself if you're unconfident and identify what parts of your game you feel lost in. Is it your 1v1s? Is it your decision making? Is it your finishing? Or is it more specific like receiving the ball with a defender behind you? Once you identify your knowledge gaps, you can then begin to fill them. But that's the first step identifying them. One thing I always say, there's a lot of players out there who are one or two knowledge gaps away from completely elevating their career. But instead, they work on the same mind-numbing drills, as this is the way football is taught. I want to make more videos like this, and it helps when new players message me. So if you have any, shoot them across on any of my socials. My biggest knowledge gap by far was my finishing, my biggest letdown, and I think most people's is too. So I took it up on myself and studied all finishing scenarios for months. It was a lot of work because I was working off a blank canvas nobody systemized finishing before i didn't even know how many scenarios they were and when i'm making my courses i get super obsessed i just have to lock in maybe you've noticed the past month or two i've maybe been posting only once every week and a half that's because i've been putting together the final pieces of my finishing course that just released yesterday it's a two-hour course and i wish i had this knowledge when i was younger And me personally, I'm so excited to get back playing because in training, I feel like a completely different player with my finishing. If you want to transform your finishing, go check the link in my bio and I've made it accessible to everybody. The course should be way more expensive than it is, but I grew up with no money. I think it's really important. This kind of knowledge is accessible to everybody. I don't think it's fair that a small minority of people have access to this sort of information. I hope this video helped. I for sure wish somebody told me this when I was younger. It would have saved so many hours of ineffective training. Like, subscribe, drop a comment, reflect, discover your knowledge gaps, make a plan to fix them. But most of all, keep chasing your potential.